Um, next, I'll introduce Aldo De La Torre, um, who, who will um, take a, a, a different twist on the topic um, and focus a little bit more on um, the patient perspective. I'll be much more optimistic, I promise. <laughs> Um, good afternoon, Aldo De La Torre, uh, Vice President, Provider Contracting for Anthem Blue Cross. Um, a thank you to Dr. Sobo and the rest of the UC um, Office of the President for the invitation to be here today. So, uh, similar to Paul, um, you know, I'm not going to repeat um, the statistics and facts. I think that they're pretty apparent. I think that you're you're well versed in the subject matter. Um, so when I was asked to participate in this panel, um, I said, oh, great. I, I look forward to it. Ten minutes, Paul Markovich, I could sit down and have a discussion. Um, and, but I struggled to put the deck together. And Terry Leach knows that because I was late. And the reason I did is, you know, not the reason you might think. Uh, because the topic was um, examples of provider payer collaboration that promote or um, aim to get to the triple, so the triple aim, excuse me. Um, four or five years ago, it probably would have been because I didn't have a whole lot to, to demonstrate and show you. Um, I struggled this time because I had lots of activity and I didn't know which ones I wanted to display for you in 10 minutes and I may not be able to get through both of them, so I apologize. Um, but the main point, the takeaway from what I'm describing to you is that what has changed. Um, and what has changed that's different um, is not necessarily a program or an initiative that I'm going to describe for you. Yes, there, there are tactics that I can display for you, but it's, it's that we're actually talking to providers and we're talking to hospitals. The dialogue is so different now. There is a a feeling of aligned incentives, a feeling that um, together uh, we can bring a solution to the problems that, that Paul has laid out. Um, th we no longer sit in a room and point the finger at each other for the, um, the lack of performance in the system we've created. Um, that we actually are very encouraged with the dialogue that occurs with most providers, um, um, not all. There are some that want to party till the lights go out and they'll get their wish if they continue the, during the path they're going. So um, I just want to say that there is, from our standpoint, a feeling of, of confidence that the current crisis has created a, the right kind of conversation that is occurring and that allows us to leverage our, our capabilities and produce results. And it may take a little bit of time, but we'll, we'll get there. It's, it's not a cliff vesting situation. We, we need to kind of work to get there, but I'm very encouraged. So with that, since, um, the statistic you have here in front of you, uh, of the $3 trillion in U.S. health care spend, 750 of that is estimated to be waste. And for that spend, we rank last or next to last in quality and access efficiency. So we have great opportunity. Um, and and the, the basis for my presentation will kind of hinge on this piece. Um, there is an opportunity to eliminate the waste and begin the process there. And so the two programs I intend to share with you today um, really aim to get at this figure. Um, they have um, ancillary effects, yes, uh, and they're not just the complete toolkit, but they certainly will help produce the results we want to begin to um, get at this number. So some studies here, many of you um, because of your background, probably have read some of these studies, and um, I worry that they've been updated. I'm not actually accurate here, so I apologize. But I was told by um, my medical director that I'm, I'm pretty safe. So um, it is estimated that we have about 98,000, up to 98,000 patients die a year as a result of consequences of medical errors. Uh, in California, uh, we have hospital-acquired infections that are estimated to cost the, the system about $1.6 billion. So we can go on and on, and there are studies, more studies that would suggest that there is a huge opportunity to produce some results in this area. And so one of the programs I want to introduce to you today is one that um, Anthem participates in, uh, but it benefits the entire community. Uh, it is not the sole program. There are other efforts, similar efforts, but I think it's a demonstration of how Anthem has um, reached out, or how the partner parties, Anthem Blue Shield Health, and that all folks, I think, aspire to have a similar programs. 
Um, we, we all understand that it's really about execution. Um, and so, but today's is just kind of a introduction to the Patient Safety First program um, that Anthem uh, funded. We played a role in it. Obviously there are many other parties and I think the, t the takeaway here is that um, it was a collaborative effort between a payer and a provider organization and the hospitals in themselves. So again, demonstrating back to my earlier point that these are collaborative efforts um, where the system has come together to try to produce some results. So the Patient Safety First Initiative is a, a California health partnership. It is a partnership that Anthem funded uh, with the California Hospital Association, which is made up of the Northern California Hospital Association, uh, the Central California Hospital Association, and, and the National Health Foundation. So this collaborative um, is, is one that I, we have some results on we want to uh, share with you today. Um, the our Anthem's role in this, this program was to fund an initiative. Uh, we, we, we agreed to fund a three-year initiative with about $6 million uh, intended to you know, unite the hospitals throughout the state uh, with common goals and direction uh, to fund those learning labs. So because there, there's a lot of variation um, in the results amongst hospitals and if they could come together and share best practices and if there's a real low infection rate in one hospital and a very high one in another, well, there, there's a learning there that could be had that could produce some results for us. So we used our role. Uh, we're not clinicians, we're a health plan, but we could finance a solution that would bring the parties together to produce the results. And so again, it's, it's just time to leverage our role in the healthcare system. So the, the, I think the biggest issue is where do we start first? Um, so uh, with the hospital association and probably many of you who may participate in this alliance, um, we landed on sepsis, um, hospital acquired infections, uh, perinatal care, uh, particularly the one that was really important to us where we saw that a huge opportunity was non-medically indicated uh, elective deliveries prior to 39 weeks. And so I know that we've had some pretty strong goals and we work with the March of Dimes on this particular initiative. And I have some new data that's not reflected in the slides that was provided to me today, but it appears that we've, we've hit our target of less than 5%. So um, that's good news. But I'll share with you some of the results. And again, I'm, I'm staying pretty high level because I want to leave time for the panel. So my apologies if, if I don't dig deep into this. So this, we're in the second year, so we use the 2009 as a baseline period in 2010 and 2011. This is a 2011 financial result. Uh, we don't have 2012 yet, but that'll be coming in the door pretty soon. Again, the National Health Foundation aggregates the data and does the measurements for us. But you can see we've made uh, significant progress in the areas where in which we targeted. Uh, the estimated savings is about $19 million. Um, it's probably larger than that. I think they use average costs, and in California, as Paul indicated, average costs have a different meaning in terms of what that represents. And so this was the data that was compiled, and it shows that there's a tremendous amount of effort here that was put forward. Um, and while the savings are $20 million and they're meaningful, they may not be substantial in terms of bending the, the cost trend. I think the message is that uh, this is an initial step, but it demonstrates how, peop how the different elements of the healthcare system can work together to produce the results that, that we all desire, the triple aim. So we continue to fund this, and we will continue to fund this initiative going forward as well. So at the end, it was a win-win. We, we, National Health Foundation concluded that we saved lives through this effort, that we reduced non-medically necessary indicated premature deliveries, and we reduced costs, and we improved quality. So uh, all elements of the triple aim. So this is a program that I think ties back to the, the, um, the title of this particular uh, segment of your, of your conference, uh, where partners, uh, where providers and payers have collaborated to produce results. Um, I also want to share with you that, and this is, you know, we, we don't, we try to tie our programs together to have consistent results. And what I mean by that is we want to make sure that they all link up. So uh, Anthem, I believe, um, uh, last I checked, was the, the, the only carrier um, that offers a quality hospital incentive program. And many of those, those, those measures in our patient safety program are embedded in the quality hospital, um, the QHIP program, quality hospital program bonus program. And what's interesting here is that this is, this is uh, 686 hospitals, 70% of the Anthem admissions throughout the country. This is a, a well point slide. It is not an Anthem Blue Cross slide. 
um, have, have committed to better quality and have put money on the table to do it, meaning that if they don't produce the results that we desire, that they will walk away from, unit, from increases in their contracts. And if they achieve the results, then those, they will materialize, they will get what they negotiated. But it is a, again, the, the message here is that you have now um, hospitals for the first time willing to contribute to the quality issue and, and so much so that they're willing to put financial resources at risk uh, to, to back up that commitment. Uh, the second program uh, is what we label a patient-centered primary care program at Anthem. It's um, also known by many names. It goes by ACO, it goes by AICU, uh, it can go by patient-centered medical home. In the end, we're just trying to get away from acronyms to begin with. And it's um, our intent to just transform how we do business with our physicians. Um, in, in this particular program, I would even argue there's a fourth aim, um, and it's clinician satisfaction. There are many things that we do today that ir irritate, um, cause redundancy in, in the delivery of medicine, that if we had a different program, if we had better clinician, clinician satisfaction, we would hope that more, more individuals would look to get into the field of primary care, because uh, we do have a shortage there. So we do aim for the triple aim, but we also have a, a, we are looking for the fourth as well, which is the clinician satisfaction as we try to encourage more physicians to remain in practice, not leave for concierge medicine, um, or leave entirely to do something else. And then also encourage uh, physician, uh, others to look to primary care as a profession. And so we're trying to change the model, the frustrating elements that uh, are, you know, manifested today in our contracts. So, uh, why do we need patient-centered primary care? Um, I think it's well documented, some of the shortcomings of the system. Um, I've listed out about six here for you. I don't think that they're gonna shock you a whole lot. Um, I think what I would like to focus on here in my time is that uh, I, my contracts uh, encourage you to treat and treat and treat. Um, when many times you wanna provide care and support and I don't recognize that and so I don't, I don't emphasize that. So I think these programs that we're, we're launching here with uh, many, including uh, UC Davis and UCLA, hopefully at the, uh, towards the end of this year, and, and UCSF, um, will, will change kind of the, the value proposition of how we contract with each other, where there, we're, it's a shared um, goal, uh, we call it a shared P&L, where we pay for care and support, not just treatment, uh, where we, we share with you the rewards of your efforts. So this is not a situation where um, you treat, we pay, we don't talk to each other. So this is really intended to change the, the model of reimbursement from volume to value or create a different line of incentive while still focusing on, on quality because the, the, the additional funds uh, can be meaningful but they can only, be, they can only occur is if you produce the, res uh, the quality results, you hit the quality benchmarks. So it does tie everything together nicely. The, we talk about the triple aim, and so I thought I'd just leave you with this. What does the triple aim look like? Uh, and so th this is what it looks like to, to Anthem. This is a member who's enrolled in one of our programs. Um, if you look, you'll see that not only do we save cost, that's important, we need affordability, but you can see that as depression screening improves significantly. So we did not restrict care. Uh, if, you, if you talk to this gentleman, he'll tell you that he finally got the support that he needed. He was getting plenty of treatment. He was just not getting the support or the, the, that he needed. So I think that this individual and this result, by, while one represents and basically is the triple aim. Thank you.